Good morning and welcome to worship at Broad Street United Methodist Church. We are so very happy for you to join us online or on the radio and we pray for the gift of God's peace and presence with you wherever you are and we pray for the fullness of the experience on this festival of the Christian home to also remind us of all of the good gifts that come from not only church family, but from the families that God has placed us in. We want to uh, thank God for Francis Bruce and the flowers on the altar on this first Mother's Day since her death are reminding us of the great beauty of her life and all that she invested in us here at Broad Street. And for all of the beautiful people that have shown us God's love, we give special thanks today. We hope that you'll continue to join us for the Sunday night times of reflection on courage, Jesus' call to, uh, to a courageous faith. And that's at 8 o'clock on the church's Facebook page. We also have many other ways that we invite you to join in discipleship. And, and one of those that's coming up is one of the most remarkable, inspiring missions that we and other United Methodist churches around Statesville have established in the Back to School Bash because of the thousands of children that are served students in the what we hope is a full coming back to school. Uh, it, it takes some pre-work and so we're gonna invite you. We've made a commitment to shoes. And so we've got shoe sizes and cards in the office. We're gonna ask, we've, we've promised from Broad Street 150 pairs of shoes. So we wanna ask you to, to be a part of this really wonderful ministry. Come by or just buy a pair of shoes. You don't have to have a card, but we're gonna begin collecting those soon. You can see that in broad focus. And I hope that everybody will take this opportunity to be a part of something big and something really wonderfully inspiring. And then we are so looking forward to the time that we can lessen more and more and more of the restrictions that we have had through this terrible pandemic year. And the key to that is to get people vaccinated. And so in Iredell County right now, the, the vaccination rate is at 25%. That's approximately half of the number of the percentage of people who have been vaccinated statewide. And so we are joining into a partnership with a Vax Van, which is a faith partnership to help distribute vaccines to make them as available as possible. And so ours is going to be here in Memorial Hall on Thursday, May 20th, and we are gonna ask you to help spread the word all around the community. We have a particular interest in underserved populations, and one of the gifts that we will be able to provide in this faith partnership is that you don't have to register. We, we hope people will, that would help. But for anybody who is just completely befuddled, but with websites or you know, doing this or doing that, we, we are taking walk-ins in our clinic. So it'll be Thursday, May 20th from four to seven. And the more people that are vaccinated, the more the whole community is protected, not only against this virus, but against variants which feed off of the virus as it grows. So I hope that you will keep that in prayer, but also help us to serve the community in this way. and. Our faith shines in so many ways. And these are other ways that our discipleship reaches its fullest potential. And so grace and peace and the abundance of Christ's love be to each of you now as we sing one of the great hymns of faith. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
Hi, everyone. I'm Aaron. And uh, today for Children's Time, I want to show you this picture. This picture, I'm hoping uh, we can zoom in enough to see a crown. It's kind of hard to see from there. This is a picture of a very wonderful woman. This is my mama. Um, she's wearing a crown because this is the most appropriate picture I think I could find of her, actually. And uh, today is Mother's Day, where we honor our mothers, and we do need to realize our mothers are queens, and we should treat them accordingly. But there's a thing about moms is, y'all, I'm 37 years old. When my mama tells me to do something, you know what I do? Whatever my mama just told me to do. Uh, there's a reason I listen to my mama. My mama tells me to do something because she loves me. And I'm going to do whatever it is that she's asking me to do because I, I love her. And you know, it's kind of the same thing with Jesus. Jesus asks us to do certain things, like love our neighbors or love each other. And he asks us to do that because Jesus loves us. And we want to do them because we love Jesus. Jesus tells us that if we do what he's asking us, that we're going to be able to stay with him. And that's pretty exciting. Y'all, I hope today you treat your mamas really well. I hope you mind your mamas. And I hope you mind Jesus. And remember that we want to do these things because we love them. Today, uh, well, actually not today, but next Sunday at 3 o'clock, there's going to be children's time on our wonderful playground. We would really love to see you there. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to play with some new friends, have some great experiences, learn a little bit about Jesus, and have a great time. So we really hope to see you there. Thanks. To our time of prayer today. I know that everyone has got many needs on their hearts, and I would ask that as we pray, that you pray and lift up the prayers on your heart that you would like to share with the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today we come to you, and we thank you for yet another day that you have blessed us with. You give us so many, many gifts the gift of love, the gift of joy, peace, so many other gifts that you give to us. And how many times do we forget to stop and thank you? We just take it for granted. But you don't give up on us. You just keep blessing us every day over and over. And as we are all together, whether here in the sanctuary or at home, we each have our own needs that we would like to lift up to you. And as we lift these up, Lord, whether they're people who are sick, 
who are hurting, who have lost a loved one, who are lonely. There are many, many, many needs. We just ask, ask that you minister in each and every situation. We ask that you bless our country. There's been so much going on this year with COVID and about the time you think it's gonna slow down, it comes again. And there's so many families that have been affected who just need your love and your grace and your presence. I ask, Lord, that you be with us as a church as we look at new beginnings, that you would just rain down your love on us and help us, Lord, to know that in order to go forward in anything in life, we have to trust you. Help us to put our total trust in you and help us to be a gift to those around us here in our church and in our community. We thank you for our wonderful pastor who is such a gift to us and our congregation and ask, Lord, that today that you would just use her as your servant to proclaim your word so that we will be changed because of the words that we hear today. And there was a prayer you taught your disciples many, many years ago that is still prevalent for us today as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. during our service would be a normal time that we would take up our offering but we're not going to be doing that so we ask that you um, go online there is a link on our website where you can give you can drop your check or money by the church or you can mail it in I heard a story one time about a little girl who said all she had to give God was just a few pennies could he use that well, you know the answer to that is yes, because pennies make dollars, and God can use whatever we give. So don't think that your gift is ever too small, because God can use it. We're thankful for the opportunity to give to God, and we are remembering the opportunity we have to receive the gift of God and His Holy Word. The gospel lesson today is from John 15, 9 through 17. Let us hear with our ears and our hearts the words of Jesus. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And this is my commandment, 
that you love one another as I have loved you. No one is, no, there is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, I chose you. And I've appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you what you ask in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you love one another. This is the word of God, a gift for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Let us pray. What an amazing thing for Jesus to say that he had passed on to his disciples everything, oh God, that you had given to him. And that's the ultimate kind of faithfulness. And now we want to receive everything that you have passed on in a way that it continues to bless and enrich and nourish and strengthen and comfort us. And I pray that we will listen, not, not to my voice, but to your words and through this other comforter that you promised to send that we would hear just the individual and intimate word that you have for each of us today. And we will gratefully open our ears and our minds and our hearts 
to receive with joy the great treasure that Jesus extends to us today. Amen. Friends, I confess that I am uh, I'm partial to Mother's Day. <laughs> now, I'm partial to Mother's Day and really have been all my life because I truly had the most wonderful mother in all the world. Even as a child, I knew that it was right to have a day, at least a day, when we said thank you to my mother. And then I had the joy of becoming a mother myself, understanding God's love in a whole different way. And so motherhood took on a whole new realm of not only appreciating my mother in some ever-expanding ways, but mothers in general. Then my own daughters became mothers. And many mothers in churches that I have served have inspired me, nurtured me, and helped me to this day. And then I have watched with admiration as mothers make a difference in the lives of their families and churches in the community and especially in this incredibly demanding year. Mother's Day holds a lot for me to celebrate. So it was just icing on the cake when I learned that this day, as far as I know, is the only national holiday started by a Methodist in a Methodist church quite partial to Mother's Day. Thank you very much. Mother's Day was started by Anna Jarvis on behalf of her mother, Anne Reeves Jarvis. Anne Reeves Jarvis was one of those women who made life better for other people. She was laser focused on doing the right thing to make life better. Anne Reeves Jarvis was from West Virginia and the Civil War had had devastating effects on the families and the community that she loved. The losses that they suffered were staggering. And so she had a passion to mobilize mothers to make sure that people would never go through that kind of pain again. She thought mothers could make an appeal in a unique and powerful way to say we should never again make the same mistakes that led to the kind of losses that we have sustained. Anne Reeves Jarvis may sound like a mother you've known and may her tribe increase, but the mother who inspired Mother's Day was driven to make sure that the pain of the Civil War was not wasted and that women would work with a single focus in their homes and in their churches and in their communities to say, there must be a better way. It's a very inspiring story to, to lift up loss for the sake of redemption and a better future. The first Mother's Day was held in 1908 three years after Anne Reeves Jarvis had died, her daughter led the movement for Mother's Day to become a national holiday, but she started it in their home Methodist church in Grafton, West Virginia, and the idea blossomed until in 1914, after an extensive letter writing campaign, President Woodrow Wilson signed a declaration that the second Sunday in May be officially known in the United States. It's Mother's Day. Now, the sad thing is that Mother's Day quickly got twisted toward money instead of principle. Retailers quickly learned that there was a profit to be made with the idea of people honoring their mothers, and the financial incentive motive of our economy really kicked in, went into overdrive. And it got so bad that Ann Jarvis tried to rescind Mother's Day. She felt like it had become all about the money instead about peacemaking and love. 
And her first Mother's Day celebration in Grafton, West Virginia, it, it raised the challenge of remembering what the mothers had done and the losses that they had suffered. And by the time Anne's mother had already died, it was important to her specifically for people to speak their genuine feelings to their mothers while their mothers were still living. And she had vehement public criticism for Hallmark. <laughs> she said it was lazy for people to pay money for somebody else's expression of feeling toward their mother. She thought buying a card was the utmost laziness. Tell them yourselves how you feel, she challenged people. This is one day that you should take the time to tell your mother what she means to you in your own words. So I can't think of a better text for today than the words of Jesus, where the Savior of the world is telling his disciples from his heart how he wants them to live in their lives. He's telling them about what is most important to him, what they need to know. He is sharing his hopes and dreams for their futures, futures which would be different from their present and different from the past. Jesus is doing exactly the kind of heart sharing that makes a difference for the future. And he uses words that connect, simple words, with lessons that matter and can be remembered like my mother, and maybe many of yours. He used a lot of little words. His, his first, they're big in their meaning, and his first big little word is if. If you got it in a spelling bee, you really could not mess it up. It was, it was much too small to ever have been considered a challenge in a classroom, but Jesus says, if you love me, you will do what I say. There's nothing in the Gospels that indicates what I think maybe most people have heard. What, what I guess from people's behavior is something like this. If you love Jesus, you can do whatever you want. You can follow Jesus and demand your own personal preferences. I don't know where they got it, but I think a lot of people have heard that somewhere, somehow, some way. Not so much from the lips of Jesus. Jesus says, if you love me, you will do what I say. Now that conditional if that provides a, a gateway to a huge foundation. And I grew up with that kind of a connection as a natural. Maybe you did too. If I was going to live in, in, in my house growing up, then I was going to do certain things. Those, those things just went together naturally. I thank God for that. I didn't always thank God at the moment growing up, but... Oh, I thank God for that now. If you're going to live in this house, you are going to do these. Th that's, that's just, it was a contract. It was, it was a way of life. We are going to show thanks. We are going to say grace at meals. We are, are going to say thank you. We are going to be concerned about other family members. And there was a direct connection between the love we received and the love we were expected to extend to others. I am really grateful that I was raised not just to think of myself and do my own thing. Jesus says, if we love him, we will love others. And that if, now that tells us that what we do 
is shown by how we live. That's a big little word. His second big little word is as. The commandment to love God and others has been around for centuries. It, it preceded Jesus. And there was nothing new about that. What's new is this big little word, as. Jesus tells us what love looks like. That is, it is the love that he has extended to them. Love one another as I have loved you. This is what love looks like. God gives love. He expects us to give love to others. My parents and my church loved me, and they expected me to love others in the same way. This is why the health of a church is so very critical and important. So for years now, I have taken this to mean that Jesus is the perfect example of love, which is different from all of our families. Now, I, I believe now it is much more, I think, in John 15, 9, Jesus is illustrating what last week's scripture lived out. That is, when we are abiding in Christ, when we are branches closely connected to the life-giving vine, Jesus is not only the model for love, he's the source of that love. So I think that time and time again, people have listened to this text to love one another to love as Jesus loved. And they take away that they're being asked to do something beyond what they can do. Loving others is hard work. Somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> it requires a lot of patience and forgiveness. And pulled out of the context of Jesus being the vine and we are the branches, the call to love is a bar that is, at any given time, way higher than we feel like we can achieve, impossibly high. But without the first part of the teaching, people get the idea that loving others is a burden. It's, it's, it's a challenge, and it feels like an impossibility, as well as a requirement, and that's the beauty of getting the full teaching of Jesus. That is the gift. Jesus is saying that as we abide, he provides the ability, the source, the strength, the wisdom, and the energy for the love that is our goal. He gives the example and the resources. How blessed could we possibly be? We naturally love as Jesus loved when we are abiding in him. He not only gives us the model, but he gives us the resources. The first part of this chapter, which we shared last week, it has an emphasis on fruitfulness. And this week, Jesus is saying what the fruit looks like. Love is the fruit. Love is the only fruit that matters. Without love, none of the other possible graces or accomplishments or gestures of generosity without love, it's all later, as Paul would say, nothing. And whether or not we have that love, whether or not we are loving as, as Jesus loved, it shows up. It shows up in our actions. And if we are abiding in him, we have everything we need to love as he loved us. Well, have you ever seen a tree that tries to bear fruit? <laughs> no. Fruit is the natural outgrowth of the healthy connection. So if you want the strength to love, be sure you are abiding and you will love as he loved us. And there's a third little big word. 
Another one you could not possibly misspell, I don't think. And it's so. It's the S-O, so, not the S-E-W, so. Maybe you could misspell it. Jesus says, if we love, it will show. He says, as he has loved, both in the model and forgiveness, that's how we are to love. And all of this has a purpose. He says, he has offered all of these things so that our joy, his joy might be in us and our joy might be complete. God wants us to have a joyful life. Where did we ever get the idea that to be religious was to always be somber and sad and actually kind of boring or depressing. Oliver Wendell Holmes recounted observing religious people that he grew up with. There was evidently an altar call at a worship service when, when he was a boy and the pastor called everybody, you know, to come forward if they had felt God moving on their life and Oliver Wendell Holmes sat in his seat. He recounts that there was an older, serious-looking usher who came back to where the young Oliver was sitting. The older man pointed his long, bony finger at him and he said, son, if you don't go forward, you're going to live with the buzzards. Oliver Wendell Holmes having observed the joyless characteristics of those religious people around him in that church, reportedly said back to him, I would rather live with the buzzards. The goal in God's heart. It is for us to have joy, not a superficial, elusive, or shallow happiness, but a deep wellspring of great joy, a joy that transcends all of life's circumstances. My mother had that joy. Now, she grew up in hard times. She grew up during the Great Depression in a farm in northwest Kansas, and times were hard. Anybody you have ever talked to about the Depression can testify to that. Well, my mother grew up in a section of the country that had a double depression. Because in addition to the depression that was sweeping across the nation, they had dust storms and their farm was right in the middle of the dust bowl. And in addition to the kinds of losses that many, of, that which, which were catastrophic for other people, these dust storms would blow through their farm and ravage everything. And since then, the chroniclers of this time called it the worst hard time in a book I have at home, a double depression. And yet, between that and my grandmother's poor health for most of my mother's life, I'm, I'm going to tell you, when they would get around to talk about the good old days, they did not sound good to me, not even when I was a child. But I'll tell you, there was a rich, powerful, and deep joy that transcended the many difficult circumstances of my mother's raising. And that joy came from a Christian faith that flowed in their home with the love of Christ. And my mother carried that joy throughout her life. And she lived that love of Christ for others. Everybody who knew her would tell you about it. Her life was characterized by this deep, deep joy. I'm really sorry that Anna Jarvis got disillusioned by the commercialism of Mother's Day. Economic predictors are that 20.7 billion, yes, billion, dollars will be spent this Mother's Day. And while gifts and cards are fine, today it is my prayer that what we will offer is, will not be superficial or commercialized, not this week, but that we will get to the true heart of what Jesus is teaching to us, that if we love him, 
then our actions will show it in love. And that he will be the source and sustenance and energy of all of the hard work of love that should flow from our daily lives and that we would love one another as he loved us so that his joy might be in us even in the hardest of times and that our joy might be complete. Dear friends, no amount of money can ever buy that kind of life-giving power and no amount of money can compensate for the absence of the love and joy that Christ intends for us to have and live. Not everybody has had a mother like Anne Reeves Jarvis and not everybody has had a mother like mine. But everybody has a savior a dependable source of love for whatever life throws at us, offering us life and bringing us to the place of joy on this Mother's Day. Let nothing be lazy about our thankful lives today. And may we live every day to pass on this love to build the future that God intends. Let us pray. Dear God, you've been really clear. We're not going to get to skate that if we love you, then we will love others. And that you have given us the pattern that we love one another as you have loved us. And it's all for the sake of the purpose that you have stated so that your joy may be in us and our joy may be complete. And so this is a true come to Jesus day. If we love you, it will show. And it will show in the pattern you have given us. And that you will, in that process of loving, give us a great joy that comes only in this love exchange you are calling us to. Help us to feel that joy bubbling up in our souls today. As we focus on Jesus, and thank you for his life. Take in all that he has to offer to us so that our loving lives will make a difference for all the pain that we have experienced and toward that great and joyful future that you intend for us to have. Amen. There may be no one hymn that more completely captivates all that our Savior offers, then what a friend we have in Jesus. I invite you to sing it with joy and see his pattern of love for us.
for all of us that had mothers who not only taught us the importance of love, showed us love, and made sure we understood that love was to be passed on, I give thanks. And for all of us who had mothers who gave us a pattern that we could dependably follow of characteristics, and for all of us who know the joy of what it meant to be loved by our mothers, we are rich in heritage indeed today. But for everybody, for those who, for many different other reasons, did not have that kind of an earthly mother, I pray that we will celebrate today a Savior who has called us to a love, shown us a love, given us resources for a love, and offers us a treasure trove of joy in the loving life that he is extending to us today. And so may this be a celebration indeed of the great love of God, and may the blessings of Almighty God nourish, sustain, bless, guide, renew, comfort, and uphold you. Amen. Thank you.